Something feels a little fishy. Okay, so just to preface things, uh, Seedramon is my absolute favorite Digimon family out of all of them. Um, it has been since the original Digital Pet, since the original series and everything else, so I am very happy to have a deck that is primarily focused around those anyways that I can play. Um, is it a tier 1 deck? Absolutely not, but it is a very fun deck to play when it's doing its thing. Uh, there's a couple different points that you can crisscross and change things around. For example, maybe you don't want to run one of the Megas that I'm running at 2, and you want to run uh, regular Kuzmon. A great fit in the deck with what it does. But to get the actual profile going, um, we're playing one of the one Bukamon because we might as well. It's still a very good card. And then a full set of BT7 Bukamon because just so much it synergizes with the deck to give back a memory whenever we play something from a source. Going into our level 3 lineup, we're playing three of the Betamon from BT15 has on play. If you played or if played by an effect, one of your opponent's Digimon can't attack until the end of their turn, so it gives you a little bit of defense, but it's got that ever important jamming. Um, if you wanted to bump this up or maybe mess around with other ratios or other level 3s, um, there's a card that will come up later that you can absolutely cut that for. Next is uh, my favorite card in the deck uh, in terms of level 3s just because of how much it does for the deck. Penguinmon out of BT11. On play by placing one blue level 3 Digimon card or one Digimon card with the Aqua or Sea Animal trait. From your hand, as a bottom evolution of this card, draw one. It just helps to start getting things into rotation earlier on, as well as drawing cards, or later on in the game, uh, set up some plays. And then the final level 3 is BT14 Gomamon. It's a hell of a card for what it does. Start of your turn, strip any source from one of your opponent's Digimon, can't be blocked, uh, and then the inheritable of your opponent's turn when it would be, be deleted, play it back out. It's just a great effect all across the board with what it does. And with a couple of the cards that we have with alternate abilities, it does come up back from time to time. Now to go into the level 4s, playing two Abidramon out of EX3, as on play one of your blue Digimon Gains a blocker until the end of your opponent's turn when played from Digivolution cards, unsuspend that Digimon. So this can just be some defensive plays, but it can also be some offensive plays since if you're going for a push turn, if you play it out from sources, from something that's swung, or you already had something that was suspended, play it out, give that thing blocker, unsuspend it, go for another check, or maybe even the final hit. For the rest of the level 4s, playing 4 of the BT15 Seedramon, just has Rush and Jamming. It's great for that. Uh, if you have enough memory, this can essentially be like your hybrid or Rush card for game. The Jamming is also very, very nice to have. And then the final level 4 we're playing is the Promo Seedramon. Just because of how much it does for this deck. The on play when Digivolving comes up sometimes to give something battle protection, but the inheritable of when one of your effects plays another Digimon, one of your blue Digimon gains Rush for the turn. Play something out from Source, give Rush, Swing. Just letting you be as aggressive as possible. Now, moving into our level 5s, playing 2 Seedramon from EX3, has when attacking. You may play one blue level 3 Digimon card from one of your blue Digimon's Digivolution sources without paying the memory cost, and the Inheritable is the same. It comes up, and it's not bad for what it does. Um, but if you wanted to play ones that give a little bit more memory, there is always Waru Seedramon from BT11. Um, this one would be one that I could say you could bump up to 4, maybe 4 here, 4 here. 
The only unfortunate part is it is a four cost Evo versus a three cost Evo. But it does trigger on play when digivolving versus the when attacking to play a blue or purple level three from a source. And then all turns when a Digimon card is played by an effect, uh, gain a memory well, when you play one. And to finish the level fives off, playing three Mega Seedramon from BT15. On play when Digivolving by placing one of your other blue Digimon as this Digimon's bottom evolution card, return one of your opponent's Digimon whose level is less than or equal to the level of the placed card. And then when attacking Inheritable by placing one of your other Digimon as this Digimon's bottom Digivolution card, unsuspend this Digimon. It's just more ways to get uh, checks in with the Inheritable because you can Swing with something, it survives, cool. Swing with this, tuck that back under, unsuspend. Or maybe you wanna play it out via effect to tuck something, bounce something that you really don't wanna see, set your opponent back a turn. Uh, going into our level sixes is actually kinda of funny with how the deck is set up. Playing two copies of Kuzaha from EX4 has when digivolving you may use an option card with a cost of five or less from your hand without paying the cost your turn once returned when you use an option card with a cost of two or more you may play one taomon or one level four or lower yellow or blue digimon card from this digimon's digivolution cards without paying the cost uh this has some combos that'll i'll explain when it gets to it because of the amount of options i'm playing this just synergizes so well to just play out more things and uh can combo very well it was a card i alluded to with the promo seedramon because you can play an option on evo uh you get that option for free you get the seedramon inheritable effect to give something rush whether it be the level three that you played out from that, or if you played something else, which we'll get to how in a second. Finishing off level six is, is three Plessio. Plessio is great for this, the inheritable, or when you play Digimon from a Digivolution card, or bounce something of the same level once per turn, and then all turns. And then the wind Digivolving by, you may play a blue level three or a level four with aquatic in its type or its traits and then tuck a blue card um, i was playing metal seedramon not the dark masters one but the um bt2 one um it was a fun little combo but it was very very bricky because it doesn't have the aqua type so you do lose out on a lot of synergy and effects such as Penguinmon. Uh, finishing off our Digimon though, three Aegisrimon. When Digivolving, you may play one blue level three Digimon card or one Digimon card with Siegemon in its name or Aquatic from its traits from one of your blue Digimon sources without paying the cost. Opponent's turn, when your opponent plays a Digimon card, you may activate one of this Digimon's one Digivolving effects. So, just more ways to play things out. It synergizes really good with the Plessiomon, and it plays out everything except for Uzaha. Uh, going into our Tamers first, before our options, because we do play a hefty bit of them. Just two Davis. It's a mem setter that finds every Digimon in the deck, so pretty quick, explanatory. Now going into the options, uh, starting with the 1-0s playing, 1 Great Maelstrom, 9 cost option that you can reduce to 6 if you tuck a Digimon from your field to the source of one of your other ones. We're running with the theme here. Just bottom deck one of your opponent's Digimon. The security effect is activating the main, so it's great in security, it's okay in hand. Uh, and then 1 Ice Wall because it's Ice Wall. Enough said with it giving your opponent the blanket, hey, if you're going to try and swing out, uh, I'm going to make it costly on you, or losing memory if they hit it in security. Uh, and then, just two blue memory boosts. I've been playing around with the ratios for it. Um, I feel two is okay right now, but there's definitely other ways that you can um, switch it around. 
It's blue mem boost, it finds your Digimon, and it gives you memory later. Then, playing a full set of mental training, it finds everything in the deck, it reduces the evolution cost, it costs two, it does everything you want it to do, um, it makes the War Cedra cheaper to get into, which helps, it may not be an Evo for one, might be an Evo for two, but that is better than an Evo for four. And then the final card is a full set of Maelstrom, a BT-11 option, security effect activates the main effect, which is you may play one blue Digimon card from one of your blue Digimon's Digivolution sources without paying the cost. Then if you have a Digimon with Seedramon in its name and play, return one of your opponent's level four or lower Digimon to its owner's deck. So maybe you're doing your Kuzaha combo. You climbed up through Kuzaha, for example. You know, you got your Kuzaha, you got your what, whichever level 5, you've got this, a Cedra, however you have it. Let's say you have it like this, so you Evo here, off of this Evo, you play Maelstrom. From Maelstrom, you play, you know, any of your sources, it doesn't matter which one. Uh, we're going to be choosing not to use this effect for this example, obviously. So you play your your one, you give it rush with the Permo Siegemon, and then you still have your Kuzaha, your Kuzaha effect to resolve to play out your level 3 or your level 4. Depending on what they have, maybe it's Penguinmon and you want to give, draw an extra card, maybe it's Betamon and you want to uh, stun something for a turn, or maybe it's this and you want to give some battle protection because you're going for a push turn. However you decide to do it. Um, but let's see how it looks like when it's actually shuffled up and showcased. Okay, so let's get into that shuffle portion. Test hand, shuffle portion, and just show kind of how the deck plays. Um, it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy the deck. Like I've said on many occasions, I'm just a massive fan of the Seizure family. It's my favorite of the Digimon, so... Get my roll, which would be 13, opponent rolls 18, so we're going to be going a second on this. Good, good shuffle going. And as always, we'll do the mulligan and the if we kept. So our hand be one, two, three, four, and five. So we got Waru, Mega, Kazuho, plus here. Cedra. Um, yeah, this would definitely be a mulligan hand for sure. If we were to keep this, one, two, three, four, five. Let's say opponent does the uh, standard, you know, two, two or three. So our draw for turn would be a Beedra. We had Jabuka. Um. Pass them over to three. Give it battle protection for the turn. Alright, opponent's gonna do their thing. Let's say that they don't take any checks. You know, they go to zero, they pass us over to two. We draw... Hey, we hit a rookie this time. So. Evo into Goma. Draw another Cedra. And we've got some things we can do in hand. But I want to set up for a few future plays, so Evo into a Beedra in the back, draw, uh, hit another Goma, and then I would, opponent would be going to three or four, so let's pass them to four, but we'll play this one safely in the back. Alright, now they do their thing. Uh, you know, let's say through the process of it, they also take out Seedramon. In the process, they check a Plessy, 
They check a Cedra. Let's just say it was just two checks. You know what? We'll say it was three. They die on the Aegis room. You know. They're at zero. We get put back to two. Just that consistent uh, two. An Aegistra, we promote out. And now is where things uh, deviate. So since we don't have an option in hand, we're not going into the Yakuza hub because evoing into it is just slightly too much of a risk. Whereas the Plessy is definitely the safer choice to go for. And we also have this in hand. So, Evo went to the plus, he passed the opponent over to one, we draw a card, our card drawn is Betamon, that makes things so much better. Off of Plessy, let's just go ahead and play the Gomamon, and then tuck the Betamon. So Pokemon, War Siege, we're gonna see that. We'll gain a memory, gain a second memory. We've now got jamming. We've got a few options that we can go for. So we swing. It's a safe swing, at least because of the jamming. And then of course we're gonna Evo into uh Aegistra. Pass component over to three, drawing a card. Draw a, a Seedramon in that process. We're going to actually set up for a more defensive play by playing out the Abidra. Unsuspending the Aegistra. And now we've got a defensive thing going on. But uh, if we wanted to, instead of playing out the Goma from the sources, since it is better, if we knew that we could safely swing first with the War of Seedramon, like maybe we had the Betamon instead of the Gomamon earlier, uh, you could swing with the War of Seedra, play out the Abidra. But yeah, this would not have been a keep hand anyways. Uh, last two cards would have been a Maelstrom followed by a War of Seedra and Security. So, opponent on supply. We're going second. That hand was uh, definitely a mulligan. It could have kind of got there, uh, depending on how things were going, how things went, but uh, was not a very safe hand to keep. Definitely not recommend it. So we get our shuffling in. Put it just as a half cut. They're on the play. So we go one, two, three, four, and five. One, two, three, four, and five. Uh, this time having Davis, Goma, Kuzaha, Cedra, Mental Training. Such, such a better, uh, better hand. We'll assume that the opponent does the same thing. Oh, we also. Forgot to shuffle the eggs. So, draw for turn. Our draw is a Seedra Mon, so we've got both Seedras in hand now. Hatch, we've still got the Memory Buka. Uh, we Evo into the Goma Mon. Draw a card. So, we're going to give our opponent the four memory because we're going to capitalize off that. Go Mental Training, flip Seedra, flip Seedra, take a Seedra. Play out our Davis. Opponent's gonna go to four. We're gonna flip Penguin. Mega Seedra, Penguin. Penguins are really great and one of my favorite cards in the deck, but we kinda need that level five. So the penguins are gonna go to the bottom. Opponent's at four. They're gonna do their thing. Let's say I take some checks. Awesome. Blue memory boost. And an ice wall. Let's say that was enough, like as they were going, doing their thing. It passed it over, turn ends, 
Cool. Ice one security is real great. We've got a follow-up rookie now too. So we promote out. Uh, we strip whatever key source is there, and now we can't be blocked. Going to Evo for free into the Promo Siegemon. Uh, Promo Siegemon is going to give the can't be destroyed in battle effect so that we can make some very safe checks. Uh, kind of like pseudo jamming. We also need to draw our card for Evo, which was a Plessy. Uh, we'll go ahead and pop our memory because we're going to want to use that as we climb now into Mega Cedra. Going to two, drawing a card. We hit Maelstrom, so this actually changes how we're going to do things. If we didn't hit the Maelstrom, we go into Plessy. But since we hit the Maelstrom, we can actually showcase a fun little combo that I like that's in this deck. All right. So we're at two memory. We're going to Evo into Kuzaha for three, passing it over to one for now. Draw a card. Draw another Mega Seedra. Kuzaha effect, we get to play a five cost or less option. So we're now going to play a Maelstrom. Off of Maelstrom, since we can play anything with Seedra or any of our blue sources. We're going to play out the Mega Seedra. Now we have two different, or a few different effects getting ready to resolve. First effect is going to be the Bukamon. We're going to gain that memory back. Second effect is going to be the Seedramon, which is going to see the Mega Seedra get played out and give it rush. Third effect is going to be Kuzaha to play out Seedramon, leaving us with just this little bitty stack, but we went from one to three. Uh, this can still swing and still has the battle protection. We're at zero currently, so we swing. Do the check. We swing again. Do the check. Choose not to use the effect because I would like this Goma to stay just where it is for now. And again, we have a couple of different options we can go. So we're going to Evo. Into Plessy this time. Draw a card. Plessy on Evo. Uh, we can play out a source, but we're going to choose not to this time. Instead, opting to... Realistically, we can tuck any one of these. Probably tucking the Abidra back up under the uh, Kuzaha. And now we're sending our opponent over to three memory. We've established the board and we've got some backups in case these guys go. Actually, to be safe, we would put the Abidra over here. Because there's so many different ways to, to just take out a, a especially a, only an 11k uh, Digimon. But that is how the deck wants to play and function. Just it's fish. But it's just a little bit tuned to be more um, aqua base, playing around with options with the Kuzaha and the Maelstroms. Uh, security would have been another Mega Seedra, another Blue Mem Boost, and Warrior Siegemon. But if you like the deck, leave a like. If you disliked it, dislike it. If you have any kind of feedback, cards that could be good, anything to add, by all means, please add it in. I love seeing people's uh, takes on different decks because there's always going to be one that looks different. Um, different decks that you can do, different ways that you can play, different avenues, and it's always enjoyable to see. If you like the content, please subscribe. If you disliked it, um, well, thanks for coming and checking it out to this point at least. Uh, we are still doing all kinds of Digimon stuff and other RPGs and things like that over on the Twitch side of things. So if you want to come hang out, by all means, please do. Greatly appreciate it, man. Take care.